let's get started working with some of the functions that the Wolfram language has for mapping in GIS analysis. And while we do this, let's also start to work with some of the data that the Wolfram language has built into it. Because remember, we're kind of working in a, a hybrid environment here. We're not just learning about how to format this computer code, but built into it, we have this curated set of data that we can immediately access and compute with. So let's use that in our first example. For the first thing let's do, let's try to find the distance between two different places on the planet. So to do that, we're going to call the function geodistance. So I'm just going to start typing. And here I have geodistance right here. I don't want geodistance list. Just let's do geodistance right here. As it happens, a lot of the different functions that the Wolfram language has built in for doing uh, GIS and mapping related activities do start with geo. So if you start to type geo in, probably you will start to see lots of them that uh, you can work with and we'll be taking a look at uh, in a bit. But I'm going to click on geodistance and then I'll drop down here so we can start to see our syntax. But you should already start to see some similarities between this and what we were doing with the very simple plus function and the random integer function. We're calling a function and then we're going to give it some information for it to compute with and then it will return something. So notice that what we can do with the geodistance right here. We are going to get the geodesic distance here between, in this case, pairs of longitude and latitude, if I wanted to do that, I could put latitude and longitude in braces, or down here, it will give me the distance between locations. Well, I can enter latitude and longitude, but let's work with locations because it might be a little bit more fun here. So, I'm going to open up my braces, and now I want to enter a location. Let's say that we are interested in knowing the distance between Moscow and Houston. I don't know the latitude and longitude of those cities off the top of my head, and I don't really want to have to go look them up. Fortunately, the Wolfram language understands Moscow and Houston as cities and has information about them, including their location, for us to compute with. So the first thing I want to enter is Moscow, and this is how I do that. I'm going to hold down the control key and hit the equals sign, and that's going to bring up this symbol on the screen. Within that little box with the orange equal sign, I'm going to type Moscow and then hit enter. It will think about it for just a second and then say, are you talking about Moscow the city? Sometimes, of course, when you type something in like that, there'll be ambiguity as to what exactly you are trying to refer to. If that's not what you were talking about, you can look at some alternate interpretations for what you entered. But in this case, Moscow the city is exactly what I'm talking about, so I'm going to click accept this interpretation. Then I'm going to hit a comma. And then I'm going to repeat that process for Houston. I'm going to hold down control and hit the equals key and say Houston, enter. And yes, I do mean Houston the city and then close my brackets. Remember to hold down shift when you hit enter in order to run the computation. And there we go, 5,880.67 miles. I think that's pretty neat that the language has a built-in understanding of Moscow and Houston and can return what I'm looking for very directly like that. What if I'm interested in having that in kilometers? Well, there is a function for converting one unit to another. But down here on the suggestion bar, you will notice that, well, I do have an option in this dropdown to convert to metric. Maybe that's exactly what I want to do. So rather than having to type out that code or remember what that is, I can just say convert to metric. It will tell me what that code is. So the, the function for unit conversion happens to be unit convert. Sort of makes sense. And then I'm going to enter a quantity, and in this case it was the number that I just computed in miles, and I want it back out in metric, and it gave it to me in kilometers, 9,464.02 kilometers. So that's already a lot to have done with just one very simple line of code. Let's put those two cities on a map. To do that, I'm going to use geolist plot right here. And it generates a map on which the locations are indicated. And notice that it is looking for a list of locations inside braces. So let's do that. Let's plot Moscow and Houston. There we go. Our output is a map with both Moscow and Houston indicated. What if we also wanted to highlight the countries? Let's do that. Let's say another geo list plot. And we want to have both the cities and the countries that they're in highlighted.
I'm going to use the same syntax as before using the control equals to type in United States and also Russia. And there's our output. And yes, the Wolfram language does understand a whole bunch of different projections and we can modify those. We'll look at that in a bit. This will work for more than just countries. It can work for specific locations as well. So let's get a map geo list plot of this time the Washington Monument in DC. Washington Monument. Let's see if Wolfram language understands. It does. And we want to go from there to the Smithsonian. The Smithsonian Institution, the museum. That's exactly correct. And then I will close and run that computation. And it brings up this little map of Washington, D.C. Let's learn another one. This is geographics, and this will allow us just to bring up a map, geographics right here. It says, represents a two-dimensional geographic image. And so let's just say that we are looking for Washington, D.C. Let's go back to our Houston and Moscow example and say we're not interested in just plotting them or finding out that distance, but we're interested in putting on the map that shortest distance between those two cities. So we want a geographics call because that's going to give us the map. And then we have another function called geopath. And geopath represents a path between locations. That's exactly what we want it to do. And if we look at its syntax, it wants the locations inside braces. No problem. We're nesting functions together. And there we go. If you want to, you can get fancier, and there are ways to style that line and other parts of the map if you want it to look a certain way, for instance, if you're going to use this as part of a web application or something. The Wolfram language does allow you to do geodesic buffering, and the function that it uses to do that is called geodisk. So let's try that out. What we have to do is we have to make a call to the function for a map, calling a geographic, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put a buffer, a geodisk, as it calls it here, onto the map around something. Uh, maybe one of our cities here. So we're going to create a geographic, and then we're going to put a geodisk on it. Here it is right here. And we find that it wants a location as well as a radius distance. And if we wanted to, we could get more advanced and just carve out one particular sector of this disk. But we'll just do the whole thing. So we will say, uh, maybe Houston again. And we want a radius of 250 miles. Let me accept this interpretation of the city. And actually, what I want to do is I'm going to use the same notation here for 250 miles to get it to understand that, yes, I'm talking about that as a distance right there. That's a particular value with its associated unit. There we go. That's everything within 250 miles of Houston. Uh, just to show you what I was talking about here, if I had left it the way that I had it here, notice how it's in, it looks like a, like a gray here, all of that terminology. If I were just to say 250 miles and leave it like that, notice how some of that is in black and then we have this blue here. Remember that the Wolfram language is expecting one thing to be right here, the radius distance. And it says, hey, I've got uh, character 250 here and then MI, but what is that? That's really nothing. I don't think it's going to understand it. Yep, 250 MI is not a valid radius specification. Well, you think, well, I know what I'm talking about, 250 miles. Well, we can make sure, and that's right. The Wolfram language should be able to understand that. But when we want it to understand that information as one whole kind of semantic thing, that's when we use the control equals um, data entry key here to type in 250 miles, enter. It thinks about that, and it says, hey, yes, now that's one solid thing, 250 miles as the radius, and it will now perform the calculation. There it is again. What if I just want it to report the latitude and longitude of a particular location? Well, we can do that. 
This is geo position. If it understands some location, then we can get it to report. So by using the geo position function, I can do several things as you can see. But if I give it an entity that it understands, it will return the geodetic position of the specified geographic entity. Let's see if it does understand Mount Rushmore. And so there are the coordinates of Mount Rushmore. And I'm a big fan of the way that it reports latitude and longitude here, because you always have to check that within different systems. For instance, in ArcGIS, it pretends like latitude and longitude are Cartesian grid coordinates, and it reverses them and everything else. Now here, we're still using positive and negative, but as you can tell, because of the position of Mount Rushmore, that we are talking about uh, 43.8803 degrees north, and then negative 103.48 uh, 458 degrees west. So it's still using positive and negative, but it is reporting latitude first and then longitude, which makes sense when we think about latitude and longitude. Okay, so when we come back, we will start to work with some combinations of functions for our map displays.